So hi there, everybody. I'm here with Dominic Donado, CEO and co-founder of Aforza. And we've been on the road recently visiting a lot of CPG executives. And Dominic's been providing a market outlook and what we've been seeing in the world of AI. And we thought we'd just take the moment to share it with you because there's some key and really exciting highlights that he wanted to share with everybody. So with that, hi, Dom, how are you doing? Good, thank you, Andy. How are you? Yeah, very well, very well, thanks. So should we uh, maybe just take some time to, to move through some of the key statistics and the themes that you're really seeing in the industry as it relates to artificial intelligence? Yeah, um, I think that um, almost everybody we speak to has, of course, dabbled with AI to a greater or lesser extent. And there's a few things I would say uh, coming into, still, well, what's this? We're coming towards the midpoint in 2025 now, which is about to enter May. Um, in 2024, many uh, companies dabbled things like Copilot, took a few steps with genetic technologies. And I think that there are very mixed results out there. Um, and that somewhat is related to where they're doing something for a specific region or a use case, or you find there's a lot of myths. So like common myths I get is my data must be perfect. I need to have some massive data lake. It takes ages to train some sort of model. There's a lot of myths out there that you come across. Um, so all of that um, is the kind of experience that you find across many, many companies for the most part. Um, and I think in a weird sort of way, there is a level of this is all hype. I'm not sure if I believe it. It's a little bit of early skepticism that was creeping in. Um, but we know, you and I both know, from the application of vertical AI, when you have customer references, when you have specific use cases, when you have real business results, but <laughs> it could be quite a different picture. And I think that this first chart we've got here from Dartner, uh, I think find really, really interesting. And, and I kind of like to, to say that for me, um, this chart says a couple of really important things. The first thing it says is um, uh, AI has arrived. It is now actually a major business now. It's not like a future thing. It's no, it's 2025. Um, it's happening right now. And if you look into the future, it's going to basically take over um, the software market, basically, when you look at it. And, and um, you know, I, I put it to people like this. It's a bit like when you, you know, five or 10 years ago, it was like trying to buy software, try and buy software that's not cloud, not, not cloud first. It's almost impossible, right? By buying software that's not Gen AI first, it's going to be almost impossible. And if you are buying software that's not got some sort of Gen AI strategy, you really need to ask yourself why. And and still, like I think I think that um, different industries will operate at different speeds. But like I guess my key message would be is any project you start now that doesn't have some sort of perspective on this, hmm, just really double check. I'm not saying it's wrong, just check. Because we'll just look from 2026 onwards, the majority of software is Gen AI uh, at the core, which is really, really important. And what do you think that means? That's for you know software and industries as a whole. But what do you think that really means now for the consumer goods industry and the customers that we serve? Um, I think that um, the customers we serve, what you'll see is like in our particular domain is you're going to see a massive difference in productivity for your route to market for your Salesforce automation. And, and it's, it's not BS, right? We know, well, we know that from personal experience of working with customers, what we actually see happens. You're talking about after switching on AI, if the Forza, for example, if we talk about our own company, a Forza of vertical AI, if I switch that on, three weeks later, you start hearing people say, I have 50% more productive quote, direct quote, I have 40% more time than I had before, direct quote. You start to see things like um, all sorts of proactive AI use cases driving greater sales. And, and, and actually, I think we're in going into, like five years from now, everybody in the world is going to be using these tools, right? Um, but right now, through 2025, maybe in 2026, there's going to be a competitive edge for the people that do it versus those who don't. I mean, we know that. And then if you jump to the, the next chart, Andy, if you look at this one about the innovation triggers, this is, there's a lot of jargon on this that I'm going to try and, and explain it a little bit. Um, so number two on this chart, Gen AI and the uh, applications, I think we kind of, kind of covered that in our, in our talk already. But number one is really important, domain specific. All the analysts, this, this chart, I think Gartner, is it? Yeah. But it's not just Gartner. All the analysts generally point to 
the more domain specific you get, the more valuable this stuff is, the more accurate. It's not general use cases where, you know, write me a joke or tell me a story or argue a parking ticket. We're talking about, for example, in our company's case, vertical specific, consumer goods, Salesforce automation, route to market software, right? Domain specific. Tell me about promotions. Tell me about orders. Tell me about what's wrong with this, this, this uh, panogram or scenario interpretation of what's going on in the store. Like domain specific really matters. You put the, you put the, the engines there, if you like, or the thinking, you get real value. Uh, and then the third point on the slide is really important, multimodal and generative AI. And this is kind of obvious. And most people think about it as take a photo, do image recognition, use vertical AI to get scenario interpretation, which is more than image recognition, right? People get that, but it's more than that, Andy. It's about voice, it's about video. It's actually about breaking adoption barriers. Because if I can talk to my phone and ask it to tell me what to do, you know, and I'm, maybe I'm like a 55-year-old guy who's been selling soft drinks for 30 years. If I can do that, it makes it easier to adopt. It reduces the barriers to the, the technology. So multimodal, multimodal interfaces and use of AI is actually really, really important. And retrieval augmented generation, or RAG for short, this sounds like a lot of jargon. What we mean here is the AI knows how to use your data through functions, through calling into your data in a very sensible way. So let me give a really simple example. I'm in Sainsbury's or I'm in Walmart. What are, what are my top three promotion, performing promotions in this store? To do that, interpretation requires RAG, it requires knowing how to go into my data to find out the answers. And if that takes, I don't know, I don't know say that takes 60 seconds to get a response, that's a hell of a lot faster than going through 5 million different processes to find the right reports and filters and all that stuff. So retrieval of meta generation, very, very powerful concept. And then um, orchestration frameworks, um, again, more jargon, but let's just think of it like this. Just think of it in simple terms. I have this power of this AI for me as an individual contributor. But think about now if I can orchestrate it so I can do something at bulk, maybe in, in things like um, claims or um, deduction management, for example, and things like that, where I want to do things on bulk. So, so this slide, actually, this slide, one slide, so I'm talking too much about it now, but it covers so much about what matters in vertical AI and if we apply it to our industry consumer goods, you can see, like just think about all the power I've just said in the last few minutes on this one slide that we're bringing into that market. And that's why the productivity goes through the charts. Absolutely. And I think it, it really speaks to why we're seeing this inflection point in, um, in, in the adoption, the usage, and why all software will now include this going forward. And I think if we look forward, then you've got, you've got another chart that we're just bringing up here where we see that the first moves, mover's advantage in this. I think it's a chart from McKinsey here, but where you know, the value of this is, is, is significant and can really change the performance of a company. Yeah, I, um, this is a really, really important chart because it shows you all the different areas where you can have a business impact. And, and, and well, first of all, if you just look at it, I guess in summation, there's a lot. Right, you know, like they've modeled this out about how, just how much impact it can have. But the one that really stands out is the biggest bar graph in both worst case and best case scenarios is that customer and channel management. It's it's this, like the it's the sales team, it's the Salesforce automation. And I, I, I just think like you know, um, this is great, it's a great chart, it's great news for our for our customers because it just shows you like the impact we can have. So for me, this is a bit like a call to action, but like you know. As I said earlier, like act now because the people that do this now grab that market share now versus the people who just wait, wait, wait and get it. But I, I go right back to the start of the conversation. One of the things that I think is probably a little, um, I understand why it's happening, but it's a little challenging. But all those companies out there that did the generic, I don't know, a co pilot test or something, and everyone tried to figure out how to get PowerPoint to do their automatically create charts or something, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, what's the sad value? I'm not sure. I get it. I'm very sympathetic. But but don't miss out on the value of vertical AI because, you know, you've had a few indeterminate results from, you know, some users who weren't sure whether, like, you know, the PowerPoint drawing its own slides was, was useful or not. You know, what we're seeing is salespeople coming back and telling you, like, I'm 50% more productive. 
I think about the business impact that would have. And you can sort of see, I think, but I guess because I live this every day, I look at this chart, it really speaks to me. I think McKinsey have called it. Like, uh, I agree, the impact is massive. You're right. And we're talking real percentage points on EBITDA here and, and real revenue impacts, which is why then, you know, if we then look at why, um, you know, why, why um, venture capital is changing in this space as well and why, you know, where VC dollars are going worldwide. I think there's some, some really interesting stats here as well that you'd want to talk about. Yeah, I'll let people, I guess, read the slide just as we're talking here. But I guess the key thing I, I like to say in this, the one thing that just sticks in my brain is we're not talking about VC funding for software companies. We're not talking about VC funding for, you know, technology. We're talking about VC funding full stop for everything like you know there might be uh life sciences it might be food it might be automotive a bit like we're talking about the whole lot is moving towards ai like at an incredible rate so um i guess the thing is if you take if you take all the analysis if you take our, re our actual lived business results and if you look at future investment technology it just paints a picture of like a, a, a future which is frankly at this point you know the, the the horse is bolted ai is our future whether you want it to be or not it's going to happen um, and i think that um when you consider that and you consider that now people get actual real business results with the application of vertical ai i think this just points to like you know you have to act now so just to repeat something i said earlier if you're doing projects maybe some people listening to this are doing trade promotion management or thinking about a new you know salesforce automation or image recognition project i think you need to ask yourself you know is that tpm project do i have vertical ai in it i have my key account managers got access to agents that can speak to them about answering tpm questions does my salesforce automation project are my salespeople getting real-time coaching from an ai agent to be you know the best they can be and then even things like uh, image recognition I think you're doing an image recognition project really do you have scenario interpretation like why would you do it if you can't do that so i just think that that all these things now you have to like it is not business as usual and so the executives who are you know overseeing it it departments and thinking about this i, I think it, it's not that any of those things i said are wrong i just think you have to challenge and ask you have to challenge and ask because because if you're not doing it, your risk the risk is that you're gonna spend millions investing in things that that frankly, if you don't have a story, it's like it's out, it's obsolete within months. You know, um, I think actually one of the things that we don't talk about is obsolete. Actually, that's something we should probably come back to on another thing is the risk of obsolescence is probably pretty high if you're not doing this. Yeah, you agree with that, Andy? Absolutely, and I think um, to yeah. everything you just pointed to and the rate of change here. Um, not just that it's obsolete, but think of it from a, you need to future-proof any technology investment going forward. And if it doesn't have vertical AI at the core of it, like you said, it's going to be irrelevant um, as soon as you deployed it. And then finally, yeah. um, this, yeah. this whole space is moving so fast, right? And um, I think this, 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 this insights from Stripe here that just talks about the speed of um, you know, AI-powered um, companies versus those that aren't um, is really interesting. And I guess we're seeing this in you know, everything we do on a daily basis. Well, yeah, I mean, if we speak about Forza, just being candidly sharing, um, if we consider proposals that we would have written one year ago and proposals that we, we write now and our project implementations that we do one year ago and now, like the amount of um, uh, time, effort, revenue, whatever you want to say, is, that is related to vertical AI is significantly up. Like it's just, no, uh, I don't want to give away confidential information, probably it's the wrong place to do it. But let's just say it's a it's a significant proportion of something we do. It, it's now just natively what we do. And the whole company is pivoted to do it. And the whole company is candidly is turned into uh, an organization of AI experts that use these tools natively for every aspect of what they do. Sales, marketing, customer success, R&D, finance, everything. So I think that, um, the spillover from from um, you know what was sorry, not spillover it's what the transition from what was the way we worked in twenty twenty four and what we do now is completely different. We see this every day, right? And that finish with a quick funny story. Yeah, go for it. I 
you know, I find the whole thing with AI kind of exciting and, and very motivating just what you can do. And I, I think that many of the customers, there's a lot of concern about adoption and um, guiding people and a lot of, like, you know, we want them to push a button and we don't want them to have to like, you know, go off and do chats and stuff. I, I think that, um, and I get that. And certainly our technology lets you do things like push the button to drive the prompts and things like that. But one of the personal experiences I had just, just this weekend was we, we, we went with the, with uh, my wife and I went with our two dogs for like down to the beach and to take the dogs for a walk. And, um, we got stuck in a traffic jam and, you know, I can sense that the dogs are getting antsy. My wife's getting a bit antsy. And she's kind of playing around on her phone to amuse herself. But one of the things that I thought was really, really interesting was under her own volition, and my wife is not a technologist. Um, um, and she's a, a great, one of our great passions in life, playing tennis. And under her own volition, she somehow figured out how to get a video of herself playing tennis um, into uh, an AI engine and start having a dialogue with the AI engine to analyze her surf performance. And she was telling me what it was saying. And saying this is, she was saying like, she was analyzing the analysis and saying, this is actually pretty good. This is actually comparable to what a tennis coach would tell me. You know, like, you know, the surf pretty strong, but she's leaning too far back. She needs to be more balanced and all this kind of thing. And, you know, it was one of those like, and I'm sure everybody listening to this will have these little life moments, you know, that's a pretty sophisticated, thoughtful use case that just wouldn't have happened one year ago. And my wife is not in the software industry. Now, the reason why I tell that story is, I know it's got nothing to do with business necessarily, but it kind of does because all the employees we have working for us and all of our companies are all going through similar transitions and journeys themselves. And we should not underestimate how fast this is happening. No, I know you called it a funny story, but if you think back to the um, the Gartner hype cycle and the uh, innovation triggers, as we called them, I mean, if you unpack that, unpack that story, it was domain specific. It was multimodal because it involved um, you know videos, and it added tremendous business value or value to your wife in something that she'd probably have to pay a coach for. So I think um, there's there's so absolutely yeah. business value to me was a cost if you got a dentist coach. Yeah. And, uh, so no, I think it's, uh, and like, and like you said, um, whether you're into technology, you're an AI enthusiast, it really doesn't matter anymore. This technology is here. And if there's anything that's come out of, um, you know, our discussions, um, th this morning, it's really that this is happening now. The business value is, is tremendous. And, um, if you're not thinking about this and everything you do, then unfortunately what you do is going to become obsolete pretty damn quick. So, um, no, it's been, been fascinating and, and thank no, you so for sharing this with us. So the final words are, don't be a dinosaur. Indeed, indeed. Don't, and don't, yeah. just if um, anyone does find this interesting and they want to, um, you know, they want to get involved and, and maybe add, add a little bit more, you know, context from what you've shared, what, what's the best things that they can do as a set of next steps? Um, well, I guess one fun thing they could do is go to the Forza website and start interacting with Ava live now, the Forza's Vertical AI, and ask it what it can do. And um, I think you, you put that live on a few days ago, didn't you, Andy? So what, go, go do that. It's one step. We've got loads of material and blogs and advice, and we have um, a commercial coach which is available for people to try, so we'd love for that to happen, but get in touch. And actually, I think one thing I'd just say, if, I, if we're firing someone's imagination listening to this, you know, and you've got particular use cases, we have a lot of examples and use cases now that we'd happily chat about. But also, if you've got questions about use cases that you see, and want to know if, whether it's 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 you know feasible? Give us a call. Fantastic, thanks, Dom. And um, and you said this 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 all of this content was part of um, some C-suite briefings that you've been doing with CPG executives. So again, if anybody finds this interesting and would like you know to bring a personalized briefing like this to your company, then then please just reach out as well. So thank you, Dom. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Take care. Later.